The ocean is a beautiful yet horrifying thing. The ocean makes up 71% of the earth. Its vast waterways are home to countless marine life, sunken ships, and plastic bottles. Yet despite how much humanity has traversed the open waters and explored its coral reefs, Scientists say we've only explored 5% of them. 95% remains to be unexplored, and its horrors and secrets remain hidden. But that doesn't deter humans from exploring the beauty below the water. Valkos, written by Akio Tanaka and standing at 43 chapters, is a manga about freediving. Freediving is the act of diving without oxygen-provided equipment. We can still use fins, goggles, and the like, but there is no oxygen tank. The diver has to rely on their lung capacity alone. Sice, the main character of the manga, is on a journey to beat the free diving record of 90 meters, or 295.3 feet. That might sound deep to the uninitiated, but the danger isn't quite clear. At 0 to 10 meters, the body is completely fine, with unnoticeable comfort being the highest level of pain you'd experience at this level. At 10 to 30 meters is when things start to go wrong. At this depth, the mind will begin to lose reasoning, and the body's functions will be slightly impaired. Counteracting these mild symptoms is the sense of euphoria from the adrenaline rushing through your body. At 30 to 50 meters, the mind will be affected by the pressure around it, causing your decision making to be affected. You think you're swimming up when you're actually swimming down. The adrenaline continues through your body as you begin to get overconfident. I can dive even deeper into the abyss. Then the anxiety begins to set in as your mind realizes you've gone too far. At 50 to 70 meters, you begin to get sleepy as your body just wants to shut down. Your judgment gets even worse and you get even more confused. You experience hallucinations, dizziness, uncontrolled laughter, severe response delay, hysteria, and your anxiety turns into absolute fear. At 70 to 90 meters, you experience poor concentration, mental confusion, stupefaction, decreased dexterity, loss of memory, and increased excitability. At depths below 90 meters, you experience hallucinations, increased manic or depressive states, disorganization of the sense of time, changes in facial appearance, dizziness, euphoria, blackouts, and consciousness, and in some cases, Death. I think you can now understand the dangers of diving at such depths. And let's not forget that Sice is diving without an oxygen tank. He's diving into the abyss with no lifeline. Even though the ocean and his own body are rejecting his actions, Sice continues to dive deeper and deeper. Despite the dangerous conditions of the manga, it's not in the horror genre. It's a sports drama series, but I would argue that it could be a horror series. Not just because of the effects the characters go through when diving, but also because of the fact that they delve into the darkness further and further. I don't feel fear of the physical effects. I feel fear of the unknown. What we humans can't see with our naked eyes or even special equipment. I feel fear for what could be lurking in the abyss. Beginning at descent. Cruising depth in roughly 40 seconds. Stand by. Um, I'm seeing some voltage irregularities in the instruments, so keep an eye out for sparks or flames or anything like that. Approaching maximum depth. Uh, the hole's feeling it, but it's still holding strong. Closing porthole shielding. We're starting to lose radio signal. You'll be at cruise depth soon, so respect and be careful. You're on your own. 6,000, written by Koiki Nokutu, and standing at 22 chapters, follows a group of scientists who descend to a research station 6,000 meters under the ocean, with the goal of repairing the research station that has been out of commission for three years. The reason being that the previous crew had died of unknown causes, but the events behind their deaths would soon be uncovered. The current group we follow descends to the station and begins to make the necessary repairs. Katakura, the main character, wakes up the next morning and sees something outside of his window, which is impossible, right? He continues about his business, but suddenly one of the workers freaks out in the conference room, saying she saw her dead father outside the window. Paranoia is slowly creeping amongst the crew, and their fears become even more affirmed when they find the sole survivor of the last crew locked up in the old food storage room. He's taken to the med bay, where he tells our main characters what exactly happened down there three years ago. The original crew was locked down in the station, with no one getting in or out. Everyone was dying to get to the surface and see the sun once more, so much so that one of the workers 
workers got killed by another, which awakened an ancient Mayan god of darkness. The workers died one by one, until the sole survivor was the last one alive. The crew doesn't know whether they should believe it or not, until the god of darkness sends a horde of dead people after the living crew members. The majority of the crew dies, but the remaining survivors manage to make it to the surface, surviving for another day. But the god of darkness is still lurking around the waters. Even though 6,000 is less scary than what I've tried to make it out to be, it falls into the trend of Lovecraftian style horror. The idea that the ocean is intrinsically connected to the supernatural. Whether it's 6000, The Lighthouse by Junji Ito, which is an adaptation of the movie, or video games like Dredge, our minds can't help but come up with some cosmic looking horror that lies in the depths below the surface, waiting to trap whatever would be adventurers attempt to explore the crevices of our ocean. But even then, there's a certain layer of disconnection that's created in your mind. It's in the ocean, so it should be safe since I'm on land. It is until the barrier between land and sea is broken, when a monster from the depths washes ashore. The thing that washed ashore is a short story by Junji Ito that follows a boy with megalohydrothasylophobia who goes to a beach where a whale has washed ashore, according to local news. But the scientists and onlookers that visit said site don't see a whale, but a 30 meter long serpent like fish. Its head is covered in tumor like eyes and features transparent skin, allowing onlookers to see its organs. The scientists claim that this is a miracle and that this beast could change marine biology as we know it. Then a civilian notices something. There's a human body on the inside. The crowd begins to panic, stating they should cut the beast open and get the victims out. So they cut the sea creature open, and dozens of human bodies poured out like a balloon, releasing helium. That's when one of the crowd members recognizes her fiance, who supposedly died on a shipwreck ferry seven years ago. And the weirdest part is, they're still alive. The husk of survivors rush towards the lively onlookers like an animal that hasn't eaten in weeks. It's thought that the survivors lived in the sea like parasites, feeding off whatever fish and other things the creature consumed. It is almost like a remora that feeds on the waste of sharks. The survivors are declared mentally ill, and who knows if they'll ever truly recover. Although Washed Ashore is a really short and not that scary story, the idea behind it can be utterly terrifying if done correctly. I mentioned earlier how we can think of a division between land and sea. When that line is severed, it almost feels like a violation, as if we're seeing something we're not supposed Supposed to. And the onlookers are somewhat punished when they're attacked by the human parasites. The deep sea is trying to keep its secrets. Most of the threats I've covered are of the supernatural variety ancient gods, Lovecraftian creatures, and death itself, but there's one common threat that the sea shares with land, and that is humans themselves. Blue Heaven by Takahashi Tsutomu is a psychological thriller series about a murderer on a giant cruise ship named Blue Heaven. The cruise ship picked up the murderer from a fishing boat, leaving him to be a survivor stranded in the middle of the ocean. But an actual survivor on said fishing boat tells the crew about the killer in question, and how he can only laugh when seeing people die. Even though the series has a serial killer on a boat, the idea of human threats in the open ocean isn't new to us. Of course, everyone knows of pirates and vikings, but you rarely hear about modern day pirates on TV stations. CNBC has posted a recent article talking about how pirate attacks have reached their highest peak in the last six years. A major contributor to this is the pirates of Somalia, which cost tens of billions of dollars annually because of their attacks. This is such a big problem that the Biden administration has permitted the sale of drones and military equipment to India in order to fight back against said pirates. And let's not forget the countless battles that happened on the open ocean during World War I and World War II. Not even the ocean is a safe space from human bloodshed. Whether it's the water itself, the mysterious creatures, the supernatural, or the human factor, there are many horrors in our waters. But despite how scary I made it out to be, there was also a sense of beauty in the ocean. These little ecosystems of fish and coral reefs that live undisturbed from human contact, aside from the plastic that makes its way there. There's a duality of light and dark when it comes to the ocean, and maybe that's what draws us into its depths. While I've mentioned these ocean-based manga titles, I still recommend you check them out for yourself, as I've only really scratched the surface when talking about 
about them. I also want to thank you so much for watching. Let me know if you'd like to see more of these videos where I talk about multiple manga with a shared theme. That's going to do it for me. I'll see you in my next video. Goodbye. Thank you.